Okay, so we're gonna sign in. I'm gonna sign in as my admin user. Notice on our latest post here, we're also seeing a new post in the JavaScript forum, so that's cool. Now let's click settings, and yeah, you can see that in this drop down, I actually have the admin section as well. Um, so that's pretty cool. And if we click my profile, we are currently getting a null reference exception. All right, so what's happening here? So details getting called, um, but we're passing in a null ID. So let's go ahead and try to fix that. So we can actually keep the server running here, and what I wanna go do is investigate that link in our nav bar. So if we go to our views, and then shared, and then our layout.cshtml, and we scroll down here to where we have our profile link. Okay, so, well, yeah, what's happening here is clearly we are not passing any route IDs to this uh, action of detail in our profile controller. And so what we need to do is supply this ASP route ID at user manager dot get user ID and go ahead and pass it the user on this context. Um, recall that we actually have injected the user manager here at the top of our view, so that's all good. And we'll go ahead and click continue now. And if it gives you this warning that edits were made that cannot apply while well, debugging, we'll just hit stop and we'll restart. Okay, so we'll go ahead and sign in. And then settings, my profile. Okay, so we have a completely bare bones profile page. Let's go ahead and write some very quick styles for this page just to get it in, in at least a little bit more of a presentable state. So what I'm gonna do is bring this over here and our code on the right here and then we'll find our site.css file. And let's scroll down here a little bit. So our CSS file is quite large. Um, and yes, this is something I would recommend kind of chunking up and then creating um, perhaps separate, separate files for each, each uh, view or at least each collection of views. Um, but I'm just gonna create a section here for user profiles. So we had a class user profile. I'm gonna apply some padding to the background color of white. Also being a little inconsistent here where I have like um, shortcut hex code versus this uh, actual, um, versus actually saying white, but that's not too big of a deal. Then I just had a little bit more here. I'm gonna go ahead and paste it in here. Um, and I'll expand it so we can see it. I had a bunch of different labels and we're gonna display those as block and just set some padding on them. And then I had a username ID. And so let's go ahead and just refresh the page here and see what this is starting to look like. All right, so um, starting to come together. Let's see what other areas we had here. Uh, so we had a user profile row. We just need to make sure that this column containing the user information gets put inside that row. So let's minimize this and we'll maximize the code. And let's go back into our profile view, our detail view that is, and go ahead and make sure that this column is inside of our row user profile. In fact, if we format this, it will be easier to see. So, yeah, we have a column uh, with four and then a column with eight here. Okay, so there's our simplistic profile. We don't have a user image yet, so let's go ahead and wire up that functionality now. So we've got our form, and you can see if we click on it, we can indeed browse for files on our system. Um, but we need to wire it up to a post method that's going to handle actually taking an image from this form and then actually posting it up to cloud storage. So if we minimize and then head over into our profile controller, I'm going to stop the server. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a method in our profile controller under our detail method here. 
and we'll make sure it's a post method. And what we're going to do is make it an asynchronous task um, with an I action result type here. And we're going to call it upload profile image. And it's going to take an I form file type. So we'll control pre to bring this in from ASP.NET Core HTTP, and we'll bring task in from threading. Okay, so there's going to be a few things that are actually going on here. And we're going to work through them. It's, it's going to be pretty straightforward, but um, there are a few steps involved. Um, as you recall, we've already injected an upload service, which we need to actually implement a method in. And we have the uh, user service and user manager to deal with our user. So the first thing that I'm going to do is go ahead and get the user ID from the user manager. It has a get user ID method on it. We can just pass the uh, user from the context. And I'm just going to write out the steps of what we need to do here so that, you, that we can kind of keep track along the way. We need to actually connect to an Azure storage container. And then once we have a valid connection to our account, we need to get a what's called a blob container. And we'll take a look at that in just a minute here when we look at Azure. And then we're going to get the file name that of the file that the user uploads here. And to do that, we're actually going to have to parse what's called the content disposition header on the HTTP request. So the framework has all this built in for us. And so it, it may sound more intimidating than, than it is perhaps, but basically we need to go ahead and parse the content disposition um, response header and go ahead and grab that file name. And then we need to get a reference to what's called a block blob. And this is just a particular type of blob that's going to um, be uploaded to our blob container. And we have an API for that as well, so that's not going to be very difficult. And then on that block blob, upload our file. And we're going to use the file name that we grabbed from the response header here to actually pass it to this uh, block blob, which will have a method. And then finally, at this point, you know, at this point our file has been uploaded. And so then what we'll finally do is we'll go ahead and set the user's profile image to the URI that comes back from our block blob. So our block blob's up in the cloud. Um, we have a physical URL that we can actually just visit and display that image provided that we have our storage container set up so that we can just read anything from it. And yeah, then we basically just store that URI in the database as the user's profile image. And then any place that we want to render it in our application, we have a reference to it. Okay, and this is going to await an action result. And this expects us um, to have an action result here. So then we'll just like redirect to the user's profile page. So a prerequisite for all of this is to actually set up a storage container on Microsoft Azure. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can do that. 